Hi guys, Dorota Palicka International Nail Artist and Educator here and today we are going to be playing with some cute butterflies. I actually enjoyed doing this uh, pretty quick design I would say as well but very effective with the neon pigments. Have a preview of it in here. I love that color combination. I think especially the green one. I hope you really enjoy learning this technique as well. So let's start. I'm thinking that butterfly season will be uh, nice. So I've got my tips, just remove the dust and then we are going to do some background. So high shine, no wipe top gel. I'm actually quite curious uh, how they will turn up because I love painting butterflies and my clients like uh, butterflies designs too. So we are going to create this beautiful background. Make sure you do check how the light is reflecting in your top coat. Like do not rush it this step because you want to have a nice results. And then we are going to cure it at 60 seconds. Clean the dust from this one and again put the top coat. I also like uh, this time of the year much better because all the consistency of the products is much better. Uh, in the winter months things are much thicker and I, I'm not the fan of thick gels. I do prefer when they so nice and runny. So second one in. Now excuse guys my nails they aren't really their best because we have been doing so much like garden housework and everything. Uh, and they will be probably even worse once we get the keys to the uh, salon. So yeah, that sounds really exhausting. True, the brush even ran out away from my hands. So the first tip is ready. And we are going to use this uh, Magic Angel powder. I'm in love with it. it. Looks so nice and pretty. And obviously depending on the color um, you're using as a background, it will give you a different results. So I'm just picking in a drop of it and then we are going to wrap, oh wow, wrap that in. So pretty. So, so pretty. I love the fact that it has those orangey and pinks and blues like colors through it. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And uh, as I say, different background give you a different results. So I move, remove the excess of the uh, pigment and then let's do another background. Gosh, I love it. I love it. Was this one? Such a pretty one. So chromes, you always put it in on the no wipe top gel. Then it gives you the nicer results. If I will be doing it on the client, ideally you want to scratch the free edge a little bit because um, um, the next layer of the top coat, you don't want it to be stick into such a shiny surface. Uh, you want to have a little bit of those rough, uh, rough places. That's so pretty. They will look actually stunning for those kind of mermindy looks and shells. So I'm just scratching the free edge. And then we can start painting our butterflies. And this is going to be actually fun to do it. Uh, so we will use the paint on French gel. I hope is that's the one, not the pink one. Yeah, I actually need to get a new ones. And then um, Ideally, uh, I'm gonna use, cameraman is searching. No, I don't think so, we've got it in here, but thank you so much. So my D-liner brush, we really need that. Okay, fantastic. So with the watercolor brush, we are going to start painting the wings. I'm picking up a small scoop of it on my mixing palette. And then let's paint the first one. So that's an outline of the wing. And now I can just color it in. To the bottom wing. And then the one on the other side. It's 
smooth the things out and we can cure it. <coughs> so again give it 60 seconds cure. Pick up another scoop and then we are going to paint the butterfly in a different direction. So again like a really strong press and almost creates you a really nice shape of the wing and then you can do another press and then make it nice and rounded. Smooth it out. So you can see it, we've got an amazing wing in there. And then another one on the bottom. Actually painting the butterflies this way is so fast and so much fun. Then do another one on the side. And the bottom. Don't worry about the middle because we will be painting uh, the middle once we do the coloring inside the butterfly. And then the third one. So I'm going to make it uh, which way I want it, maybe this way. It's actually a very fast design to be honest. And this is kind of what I like, especially for a salon work. Fantastic, give it a cure. So I'm gonna clean my brushes, pick up a baby wipe. So we've got some protection on our table because the next step is gonna be quite messy. Pigments. Pigments, yeah, cameraman gaze. If it's messy, it has to be pigments. So I want to do it at different colors and I think Pink one is a must-have. Actually, I like all of them. You like all of them? Okay. I do really like a green one, like I had the jacket in that green color, um, which was so nice. So we can do some green as well. Why not? Okay, grab my other brush. Okay, and that's the brush from the sets of the flowers. I like it because they are quite nice and fluffy and when it comes to the pigments, um, this is a better option. Okay, so on top of the inhibition layer, we are going to wrap in some pigments and I want some yellow one. So I'm just picking up a small scoop. Also, I will have a dry wipe in here to clean kind of in between the pigments, okay? So let's do the yellow one, starting from the middle. So the more fluffy brush, actually um, eyeshadow brushes would be probably best for pigments application. But I quite like this one as well because it's nice and fluffy. Grab another tip. I think it was this one. And again, I want to start with the yellow. And the reason for uh, doing this yellow first is the lightest pigment, so I don't want to get my brush too contaminated with uh, other colors. Okay, so we've got yellow and then we'll do yellow here as well. I know cameraman likes all of them. Fantastic. So clean my brush and then let's go into the green. And I'm start shading green. So pretty. Okay, once you have bring the pigments in, you can even play it longer, just so you get a nicer blending. See? And 
and then drop of the blue. When you're working with the blue, I suggest you even kind of tap it to remove the excess because blue and purple are very strong. See, and I don't want them to be this strong. So they will nicely fade in into the turquoise color. Stunning. Do another one. Keep fading. So pretty. And a drop more just on the bottom here. Oh, I love that butterfly already and he's even not finished. <laughs> Okay, remove the excess and what is awesome, the pigments only stick into the white gel. Put this one on the side and clean my brush even better. Pick up some orange, remove the excess because you want to have a really clean brush. So I kind of like to dip in, in my um, brushes and the colors I'm gonna use next and that's how I kind of clean them as well. Gosh, I need to do the video of um, brush cleaning as well. So orange, so you can see it, I'm kind of bringing in the pigment and then once I've got it in, I'm start fading it. Pink one. Bring it in and then fade it. the tiniest ever purple. So very small amount. Again, clean my brush. and then remove the excess. We've got another one. And then on this one, I think we could go more pur pink, more pink, yeah. Mm -hmm straight away pink and then purple and then maybe even we could squeeze a tiny bit of the blue. Okay, so I'm just gently bringing this pigment in and then start fading. So we'll have just a tiny amount of yellow. Then pink and yellow gives us orange. And then I can do the purple. Clean the brush. Purple. Tiniest amount ever. Like really tiny bit. And then the blue. the large uh, wing I could probably even squeeze it green 
So this one is going to be a, a rainbow one. trying to work only with the tiniest amount of the pigments, uh, especially for those really uh, strong colors. Then the green. You could see how much pigment has came out from my brush and I really didn't want that. Awesome, clean the excess again. And then let's do the finishing touches to our butterfly. I love those green and blue. Like, I mean, it's not a kind of colors I would use probably the most often, but I love it. When you're working with the pigments, make sure you do take them away. So like I'm always, and also keep checking what kind of pigment color you've got underneath, because if you put them into the wrong, um, lit the pigments would get really bad decontaminated so we don't want that okay we're almost done with them so next step is to grab some black and also take away all this mess deliner brush and then just paint some outline of the butterflies So what I love about outlining with, uh, for the butterflies is that we can also change the shapes of the wings. So let's do the antennas first. Okay, I started quite thick. And then as I go in closer, it's much thinner. There we are. Okay, nice and thick. And then thinner. Quite a decent amount on the edges. You can even paint like a triangle which doesn't exist in here. And then go thinner. That already looks pretty. Nice and thin on the bottom. The wing on the top. So if you want to have a thin lines, I suggest you do kind of drag the product. So here it's thicker. And then as I go to the middle, it's thinner. And then couple of the veins inside. So you want to even clean your brush so you can work really nice and thin. And what I'm doing is like I've got some quite a lot of product here on the top so I can use this product as well to create my thin veins.
and then just some lines. Paint a tiny wee body. And some veins in here. And that's our first butterfly ready, so let's cook him on this one. Again, let's do maybe antennas different ways, so I will make them twisted. There we are. With tiny head, bigger blob for the body, maybe not as big. <laughs> Again, quite a decent amount of the product, and then go thin. So each wing, like, try to do it slightly different. So here I'm going thicker inside. And then coloring those empty triangles. So I'm trying to keep like a um, raindrop shape. And if there is any empty space which is not a rainbow, no raindrop shape, I'm just coloring it in. So that's this pretty wing. And since the top one is so fancy, we are going to make a bottom fancy too. So 
So let's paint some rounded shape. And then join the things together. Give some black in there. Oh, don't destroy my butterfly. It almost <laughs> ran away from my hand. Imagine. Okay, fantastic. So we've got another one. I love the connection actually of the black and the pigments. I think it looks super cool. Oh, and this one. <laughs> I have left the one which I like, I think, the most at the end. Okay, so very nice and thin antennas. Tiny we had. Body. Now here I don't want to cover too much of my butterfly. I think it's so pretty that we don't want to do that. Clean my brush. And just a tiny wee design on the top. Gosh, Dorota, don't break it, it's so pretty. This is always so scary. <laughs> when you're happy with something and then you've got dilemma if you want to add something more or not. Okay. 
Okay, I still like it. And then that's it. Sometimes less is more. <laughs> Don't laugh, cameraman. I finished it. I, I did almost finish it. Almost. Okay, no more. Leave this butterfly alone. <laughs> Let's stop. Oh, no, we can do a dots. Let's do a tiny wee dots as well on them. I think it will look super pretty too. So I'm going to grab ideally actually a dotting tool. No, not a dotting tool. So I'm going to use it my deliner brush, but you cannot guys put any pressure in there. Yes, I want to broke a tip so I can get a new one. Maybe or not getting a okay, so don't don't touch it like almost. You know, those 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 dots almost don't exist, but they do make a job. Like I do think like those finishing details are always so cool. I actually quite like this one as well. A lot. And then in the next video we'll paint some straight lines so my so I can straighten my brush again. <laughs> Look, I love those tiny wee dots. Are they actually visible on the camera? Yes. Cool. I'm escalating the air so my hand doesn't shake. <laughs> I think always those kind of very small detail makes a really big change. Now let's stop coat them so the things becomes even prettier and then you can see it, the finished results. So that was the first one and the top coat is here. Grab away my brush from the sun. You don't want it to be cured. Put the top coat over it. That's so pretty. I actually love the combination of the chrome pigments and the painting, like looks super cool. Oh gosh, this is so zoom and I love cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> He's showing off my wrecked hands and nails, like they still didn't heal um, properly, but it's fine guys. I love you all. So I know you don't mind if my hands are so wrecked. It's just a matter of what they can produce, isn't it? <laughs> of course. Of course. And they did produce really nice kitchen. They did produce really nice garden. So it was worth it. And now they created a pretty, pretty butterflies. Actually, this one, it wasn't wow to start with, but I love how it turned it out. Really nice and cute rainbow one. It reminds me of the um, 
when Olivia Mariposa, I think it was, when Olivia was little, I was watching all the Barbies <laughs> and, and different, different child story, children's stories. Okay, so I've got this butterfly in there. Let's cook the other ones. Then the green one. I actually placed the green one in here. So the rainbow one will go in the middle. Yeah, I hope guys you have really enjoyed this tutorial. All the products we have used, you can get them on our website. And yes, we do ship internationally. So here we are. That's a set of the nails we have created. So I love how the butterflies looks, but also look at this chrome. So pretty, really pretty. Yeah, we're both sending you huge glittery hugs and bye for now.